So how does physical storage work on MQ for ZOS? It's really important to talk about how physical storage actually works with MQ, because at its core, MQ is a temporary data storage device for messages and message data flowing through an enterprise's infrastructure. So when we talk about message storage, we're going to be talking about four key terms. Page sets, buffer pools, storage classes, and log records. So page sets are vSAM linear data sets that will actually hold the message data while it's in MQ and while it's on a queue. Your messages are going to be, when they're initially put onto a queue, put on a page set. When they're gotten, the page set is going to be freed up for reuse by um, further puts of message later on. Buffer pools allow for buffering access to page sets. Because you have to read to and write from page sets, that requires a bit more processing. Whereas buffer pools are short-term storage. So if you, for example, have a message that you immediately put and then get from your queue, it might never actually have to go to page sets and that entire processing can take place just in the buffer pools. For storage classes, storage classes actually map different queues when they're initially defined to a particular page set. So if you define a new queue, it will be defined with a storage class in mind, and then that storage class has already hopefully been defined with one or more page sets associated with it. So storage class allows for mapping to occur. With log records, log records record any changes to objects that are held on page sets and operations for persistent messages in the case, in the event of any uh, lost message data. These log records are then written to a log data set called the active log data set. The name and the size of the active log data set will be held in the bootstrap data set. This, again, only applies for queues that are non-shared on ZOS. So shared queues will use different physical storage resources and mechanisms.